Well, today we're going to be talking about hot water boilers, whether that be hydronic or domestic. We'll be talking to Steven Taylor. But before we get started, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and as always, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And again, that little bell, if you click that, you will be notified of all of our videos, whether it's weekly boiler tips, uh, steam culture, or all of our boiling points. We look forward to being with you today. Welcome to The Boiling Point. I'm Richie Ware and familiar face, Stephen Taylor in our uh, rental division. Stephen, it's cold, the weather is here and started getting me thinking a little bit about just hot water, man. And it's, uh, uh, I guess people are starting to call on hot water. Uh, wanted to just talk about it. You know, you've got domestic and you've got hydronic. Um, could you just tell us the difference real quick? Domestic is potable water. So that's taking a shower, cooking food, drinking water that's domestic okay and hydronic what it's a new term we, we used to just call it hot water heating yeah so hydronic is for heating buildings building heat heating spaces that's what the hydronic side is so you're thinking a little bit about the building heat um and you've got you know eight floors let's say um and you're trying to do some heating there uh when somebody calls what what type of information do you need to to size a boiler First thing is the BTU of the current equipment. And then we want to know, you know, what's your flow rate? What's your temperature rise? What the return temperature, supply temperature? What does those look like to see, make sure that the equipment's going to be suitable for what they're trying to do. Uh -huh. And then, you know, the, the next, the last thing, one of the last things is fuel. You know, 99% of them is, is uh, natural gas. A few of them are propane, very little bit of oil unless you get in New York City and we don't, deal with those guys a whole lot. So when you actually have um, a system, is, is this system under pressure or? They're all under pressure. Most of them, you know, all the heating jobs, most of those are gonna be in a 30 to 50 pound range. Uh -huh. Of course, the domestic, that's gonna be city water pressure. So they're gonna be running 60 to 80 pounds somewhere in that, in that range. Okay, and you've got um, tanks that you have to have with these boilers? Typically you do, sometimes if they're close enough to the building and they can use their existing storage tank, it makes it a lot simpler. Mm -hmm. We just take our, our circulating pump, go through our boiler, through their um, storage tank, and then they take their pump on their storage tank, goes through the building, then the building doesn't know that there is even a temporary boiler outside. That's mm -hmm. the simplest way to do it. If they've had a catastrophic failure or they're taking their complete boiler room out. Mm -hmm. Then we have to supply a storage tank and maybe another circulating pump to go through the building that gets a lot more in depth with the solution we have to provide for them in. And so um, typically in a heating application, what type of temperatures are you talking about? Heating typically is still in that 180 degree range. Okay. Uh, domestic uh, is, in, is 140, 130, 140. Um, <clears throat> but heating typically is a little higher temperature than, than domestic is. So at 180 degrees um, on the heating side, somebody calls you, um, is, is typical the water just coming in from the, you know, from the faucet? I mean, what, that, what are they doing? On a domestic side, that's what it would be. On the heating side, it's not. Heating side's all closed loop. Right. So we'll, they'll be bringing it back. Normally it's a 20 degree Delta T across the, the building. So they'll be bringing it back 160, take it out 180 through the building. And the, the circulating pumps circulate all the time, and then their control valves in their individual heaters in the in the building control the heating in the building itself. Okay, awesome. Well, you got domestic and hydronic, but what we do have is we got guys that know what they're doing, and so if you need something, make sure you give these guys a call. Well, welcome to the Boiling Point. I am Richie Ware, and this is Steven Taylor. Um, thought we'd talk a little bit about some hot water domestic installations and mm -hmm. some do's and don'ts. Yep. Obviously we um, have our rental fleet that have the RBIs inside mm -hmm. um, them, but just some unique things and, and some do's and don'ts on what actually to do when we do those installations. Yeah, the, the biggest thing on domestic is to make sure there's not any mild steel in the system. No cast iron, no steel, no mild steel, no nothing in anything. Fittings, couplings, nipples, pipe, pumps, Manifolds, everything has to be brass, stainless steel. Hmm. You can't can't have any any mild steel because it'll rust and it collects 
you know, if you've ever taken piping apart, you see what it looks like. It collects all that stuff. You don't want your drinking water going through that. That's all got to be, it's got to be right. Is, is that a situation because um, it, it, when it's down, it starts to rust or you know, from a rental standpoint, I mean, that if we didn't have these. It, it, and even if it's not down, uh -huh. it will collect and rust because domestic water is, is so oxygen rich that, th that anything that's mild steel, that oxygen will attack. It starts to rust. When it starts to rust, it starts corrosion. The corrosion carries through the water. So that, that's, you know, that's the biggest thing. If, when they're going to install one, um, and it doesn't matter whether it's a, a rental or a permanent installation, it's the same issue. Make sure they don't have any mild steel. You know, if they're going to um, rent one from somebody, mm. ask them a real simple question. Is there any mild steel in your system? Mm. If everything is stainless steel and everything is brass, everything is, is bronze, they're okay. If there's any mild steel, they don't want anything to do with it. Just stay away okay. from it. Yeah, very, very good advice. Welcome to The Boiling Point. I'm Richie Ware, and this is Stephen Taylor. Now, Stephen, we've got something pretty cool that we like to talk about. You know, we got into this hot water thing several years back. Uh, we have found that uh, there's some other ways to do it, right? And so yeah. you, we've got some stuff that we're, that we're coming out with that uh, wanted to just kind of go through a pretty slick system here. Pretty slick system. We've, we've got a system set up now where we have uh, plate and frame heat exchangers in here so that we can have, you know, uh, processed water and potable water out of the same unit. Um, okay. What, real quick, processed water? Heating water. Okay. That's for heating applications. And then potable, potable water, drinking water, showers, that type of thing, okay. food process, that, okay. that, that type of application. And obviously potable water is something you want to make sure that you're not, you don't have contaminants. Yeah, you got to so, have clean water so uh, you keep the two of them separated. Right. And, and then this is a, a pretty, pretty cool system we've, we put together here. So we've got two heaters back there. Uh, we call them boilers. Uh, the manufacturers call them heaters. The way this thing is designed is that We've got a glycol solution between the boiler and the and the each plate and frame heat exchanger. So we can run either either plate and frame, or we can run both of them. Okay. Uh, we can run potable water and heating water out of the same system, or we can just run run one or the other. The the cool thing about it with that uh, glycol solution in there that stays charged all the time, we don't have to worry about it freezing up. Mm -hmm. We don't have to worry about contaminants getting into the boiler or the heater itself. Mm -hmm. Any contaminants stay contained in the heat exchanger, so we don't have to clean any of that. It's gonna make servicing a ton easier for the, for the, for the system. Uh, just gonna make it a lot more versatile unit than, than anything we've had in the past. The other thing that, that, that we've designed into these two, we've got another set of connections here that come right out of the heater. So let's say you're on a job site where they need construction site. They need potable water, they need heating water. They've also got a big air coil fan that they mm. need to provide heat somewhere. So we can run hoses out of this in that air coil and get them heat for, for hot air into the building itself where construction site or whatever it happens to be. So it's, Very cool. it's a really cool system. What type of uh, temperatures are we talking about? Uh, <clears throat> typical the same 180, 190 degrees. They're, 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 you know, it's, it's a typical hot water system. Mm -hmm. um, we can go up a little higher than that, but we typically don't want to get above 200. Uh, so 180, 190, and we can drop down to 140 if we need to. Right. The other thing that's cool about these plate and frames is that, you know, with a typical hot water system, we got a small delta T. Mm -hmm. We can't have a 100 degree delta T on a typical hot water system. With this plate and frame, it doesn't care. So we can run, you know, 40 degrees back into it, 140, 180 out of it, plate and frame doesn't care. It, 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 it can take that shock and take that del big delta T where the bore itself can't. So that's, it, it makes it a lot more versatile system. As far as the uh, heat exchangers, you just uh, you just made a, a comment about a, a plate and frame heat exchanger. Mm -hmm. Another, maybe just talk about the difference between a plate and frame and a tube and shell. Uh, a shell and tube heat exchanger is just what it says. It's it's a big shell and it's got coil tubes inside of it, so the liquid goes through the, the tubes themselves, and then the the outside is typically steam. Mm -hmm. We'll we'll use that to heat the water or whatever solution we're going through there. Uh, with a plate and frame, it's a completely s different s system. You've got plates, plate and frame. It's a big frame set up. It's got plates in there. And so the, you have, you have uh, on this side, um, you've got uh, water from the heater itself. And the other side, you've got water coming into the system. So they're two separate systems, but the real thin stainless steel plates in there. 
and and they do a great job of heat transfer and they're really easy to clean so they're it's a very very nice system that that plate and frame heat exchanger for a shell and tube the the shell and tube would be twice that size okay so they're a lot smaller a lot more efficient great system for what we're doing here now the systems that we we have obviously when our other units that we've got we actually can do both but we've elected to kind of pick and choose the units to do that correct? yeah because if you if you use one on a, on a potable job and and then the next job is a heating job before you put it back on a potable job you've got to clean it mm -hmm. you've got to sanitize the unit we run a mm -hmm. citric acid we have a, a company come in and recertify them mm -hmm. to put them back on a potable job to make sure that we've got a clean system going on that potable water job. Where this one, we don't have that issue because we've got them separated. Okay. So one, one side's potable, the other is processed, so we're, we're, we're clean, we're in good shape. Now you actually said it earlier, you said that you literally can run two things at once. Yeah. Right? I mean, right. One, two of them at one, one time. And, one and, and you can run three. You can, you can run, run the, 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 for the air coal as well. So yeah, right. you run, where well, other units, it's either or. You right. either run process or you run potable, but you can't run both. This one, you can run both plus plus an air coil. So they're, again, it's a much more versatile unit. The other thing that, that we've done with these is, is our other units are either propane or natural gas. Mm. We can't run fuel loss. So we've been missing jobs especially in the New York City area where all they have is, is oil yeah. projects where they're out in the field somewhere where they don't have uh, access to natural gas or propane, we can pull a fuel tank up beside it and run diesel fuel. Oh, wow. Makes them a lot more versatile. Yeah, very cool. Um, I know that there's, uh, they've got uh, several burners on this, so I'd they like do. to go take a look at those real yep. quick. Let's go look at them. All right, now as uh, Forrest Gump says, uh, I may not be a smart man, <laughs> but why do we have four burners on this thing? <clears throat> Six, actually. Six burners, right. Yeah. You've got, because you got two heaters, you've got two for natural gas, two for propane, two for, for diesel fuel. Okay. Just makes it really simple. You don't have to worry about orifices, any of that stuff. 20 minutes, you pop the burner out, stick the other one in, a couple connections, quick connects on the, on the electrical. Um, makes them really simple to, to change out. Okay, all right, so we got the tanks behind here, or boilers behind here, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, how they how they working? And and the, the these burners are strictly storage, this yep. is where, where they're storing them. Yep. They, they actually plug in on the other side where you plug them into the bottom of the boiler. Okay. Um, each one of them is 900,000 BTU, so we got 1.8 million output uh, available with the two of them together. Okay. Uh, again, uh, these are the most versatile units we've ever designed and put into the fleet because of fuel, what we can put output from them. Uh, they're just the uh, glycol, the glycol solution in them. We don't have to worry about that. We don't have to yeah. worry about them freezing, freezing up in up. there. Mm -hmm. Just, just a lot of things make these things really, really versatile for us. Awesome. Well, we've got them in our fleet and they are ready to start rolling. Ready to go. Um, so give these guys a call if uh, you need something, but, but also just to learn a little bit about the plate and frame heat exchangers and also uh, just the, um, maybe just the, the, the shell and tube, you know, just talking a little bit about several yep. things here, yep. um, as well as potable and heating. I mean, and those heating. are things that uh, I think that our, our viewers love to learn. So appreciate yep. all that. So yep. we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.